Good morning, HVAC team. Today we are moving into unit 86, which is supermarket equipment. So let me just share my screen real quick. So, supermarket equipment. The objectives are explain the difference between multiplex, distributed, and secondary loop systems, explain the purpose, arrangement, and components of compressor racks, sketch a simple hot gas defrost system layout. Troubleshoot open refrigerated display cases. Explain the difference between series, parallel, and hydronic heat reclaim systems. Describe how basic CO2 cascade refrigeration systems operate. So typical supermarket layout. Most common refrigeration system used in a traditional supermarket is the multiplex DX uh, system or sorry, multiple DX system or multiplex. So multiple DX systems or direct expansion systems. Uh, heat rejection is usually accomplished with air cool condensers because, the, uh, because they are the easiest to maintain. Refrigerant is piped from the discharge of the compressor to DX coils located within the cases and, th and then back again. Compressor racks. Most often there are uh, multiple racks that serve a number of cases that are operating at different temperatures. Most racks utilize more than one compressor, usually three to five compressors. There is an efficiency advantage to having multiple parallel compressors, sometimes a, uh, of different capacities called an uneven rack system. With uneven rack systems, you can operate at a range of capacities, uh, you know, based on the needs. Then, uh, so rack components. One of the components is your oil separator. As we know, the uh, oil separator is located in the discharge line, and it's um, and it separates the oil from the refrigerant. So, uh, out of the top of the oil separator, the discharge gas can travel from there onto your condenser, and the and then out of the bottom of the oil separator, it's returning the oil to the compressor. Rack components. Uh, so some more components, you have your liquid receiver and your uh, level indicator for your liquid receiver. So the liquid receiver will have, an, uh, will have a level sensor. Compressor safety and cycling controls include high pressure and low pressure cutout switches. So just a quick review on the receiver. We all know that the receiver is um, where the, it, it stores liquid refrigerant when it's not necessary, when it's not being used, like with low cooling um, demand. It won't need all of this liquid. So that is basically the storage tank for when you don't need all of the liquid. Rack components, subcooler arrangement. So subcoolers are used to lower the temperature of the liquid refrigerant leaving the machine room to reduce the amount of flash gas through the expansion valve located at the inlet of the refrigerated case evaporator coil. A subcooler using the high temperature rack refrigerant to subcool the low temperature rack refrigerant is shown. And so here's your subcooler right over here. Electronically controlled expansion valves. Pulse width um, modulated expansion valve located in the refrigerated meat case, which is right over here. Expansion valve is located under the left side of the meat case. So they got it shown on this graphic here. So the pulse width modulated valve opens and closes quickly to control refrigerant flow to the coil. Defrost. High gas defrost is more complex, but it is uh, but it is fast and requires less overall energy. The cycle will progress in the same manner as the electric defrost, but instead of an electric heater turning on, a hot gas valve will open to allow high pressure and temperature refrigerant refrigerant gas to flow through the evaporator coil. 
the refrigerant flows backward through the coil and out uh, through a check valve into the liquid line. So basically, the discharge goes, the discharge gas goes from your compressor straight to your, um, to your condenser coil. But in the hot gas defrost cycle, there's a solenoid valve that'll open up and allow the hot gas, the discharge gas coming from the compressor to bypass the condenser coil and go straight to your EVAP coil to defrost the ice buildup. Location and layout. Secondary loops can also be used for heat rejection from the rack condenser, which can be located in the machine room rather than on the roof. This eliminates the long refrigerant lines required to deliver the refrigerant to rooftop air-cooled condensers. Distributed systems utilize DX case coils similar to the multi multiplex DX design. However, to minimize the long runs of refrigerant lines, the compressors are distributed throughout the store near the cases being cooled. Open display cases. A typical multi-deck open meat case, and then over to your right here, we have a closed meat case. So to maintain a more appealing shopping environment, many supermarkets will display some of their refrigerated merchandise in open display cases. This is due to the belief that open display cases allow product to be more sellable. However, current studies have shown that this may not necessarily be true, and new supermarket design is moving toward more energy efficient closed display cases. So open display cases, air curtain temperature profile of an actual display case captured using infrared photography, which is what we're looking at here. And our, that is our air curtain there. And then airflow through an open multi-deck case. So they're showing you your fan is located here, airflow is going around in a cycle. <clears throat> so there are several types of open display cases which can be categorized into two general types, single deck and multi-deck. Since there are no doors on open cases, they rely on an air curtain to provide a barrier between the store's environment and the product. The evaporator coil and its fan are located at the bottom of the cabinet with the fan located in the front of the coil. So you can see here, that's our little fan blade. The fan is blowing this way. So it's sucking the air in and it's blowing it across this coil and it's coming out cold and it's going in this cycle here. It's being directed down. Now this is your air curtain. So there's no door um, keeping the inside of this case cool, but the, but the airflow is designed to keep the, the product cool because it's creating a barrier here between the environment and the market or the ambient air and the product over here. So you can see in this uh, infrared picture, all this red area is the actual air in the supermarket. And then this blue area is the air beyond the curtain, which is right here, this border. So that's your invisible curtain, that air curtain, which is just because the fact that the air is circulating in that motion and it's, and it's, it's creating a barrier. We know the laws of thermodynamics, um, hot travels to cold. So that hot air in the supermarket can't penetrate, as long as that airflow is constant, it won't penetrate the air curtain. It's just gonna lose its heat to the air in the air curtain itself. And everything on the other side of that curtain will maintain its temperature. So everything in here is gonna stay cool. All the hot air that wants to pass into here can't because it's being absorbed by this air that's in constant motion. So, so that is your air curtain. So that's how it maintains the uh, temperature. So dairy products can also be displayed in multi-deck cases. These cases normally operate at a discharge air temperature of approximately 36 degrees Fahrenheit. Place a plastic bag in front of the case and its air uh, in front of the case and its air curtain. If the plastic bag is drawn into the case, the store will uh, uh, into the case. The store will be the the store air. Sorry, the store air will be too. If the plastic bag can get sucked in, then the hot air in the store also can get sucked in. The cause 
will then need to be identified. Another method to test the integrity of the air curtain is to smoke the case. So basically, we're, if, if, if we can draw things in to the case, then, that, then we know our air curtain is not operating properly. We need to figure out what's going on. Is it a fan issue or, or you know, what, what the problem it actually is? So walk-in coolers. I spent many, many hours inside of these things, and it is not fun. Um, I am not accustomed to cold. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, there may be one or more walk-in coolers that are used to store food products until they are placed on the refrigerator, uh, the refrigerated cases. Walk-ins will have fan coil units located in the space. Electric defrost or hot gas is commonly used. The product is sometimes stored in the walk-in before being placed into the refrigerated display cases. So these are your EVAP coils here that's just hanging inside of the actual walk-in coolers. Everyone's probably seen something like that at some point or another, but that, that's pretty much it. Your EVAP coil is right in there. The air is getting sucked in through the back and, and, and across the coil and blown, <clears throat> blown out the front by these fans. And it's coming out at a nice cold 35 to 36 degrees. Uh, depending on the application, sometimes there's walk-in freezers, which is a lot colder than that. So it all depends on the application. That one was a refrigerator. So parallel heat reclaim systems. A parallel heat reclaim system recovers both the sensible and latent heat from the refrigerant. As compared to a series heat reclaim system that only transfers sensible heat, the refrigerant is condensed in a parallel heat reclaim system. The reclaimed coil is not in series, but rather in parallel with the air-cooled condenser. Hydronic heat reclaim systems, glycol piping is what we're seeing here. So the secondary fluid, which is the uh, glycol, uh, typically ethylene glycol, is pumped into or is pumped to air-cooled heat exchangers located on the roof. Hydronic heat reclaim systems. <clears throat> the same loop can be incorporated, or sorry, can incorporate water source heat pumps that can be used for heating during the winter months. With outside air temperatures below freezing, air source heat pumps will have a very low coefficient of performance, or COP, uh, and therefore poor efficiency. In, in, in comparison, the water source heat pumps that recover the rejected heat from the refrigeration system will operate at a much higher coefficient of performance because we're using the rejected heat to actually heat the space. And then there are your piping, uh, your hydronic heat reclaim system piping on the roof, which is a very clean install. Cascade systems. So uh, HFC refrigerant is located, sorry, is circulated to the medium temperature refrigerated cases and also to a heat exchanger for cooling the CO2. And this, uh, this lower temperature cooling uh, with the HFC allows the CO2 to remain in subcritical range. And the CO2 is being used for the lower temperature cases. So CO2, is actually a is actually used as a refrigerant on some of these like industrial and commercial systems. Uh, CO2 systems are actually um, cheaper installs and cheaper operating costs than like ammonia systems. I'm sure you probably heard of ammonia systems before, but probably not so much CO2. But yes, yeah, CO2 is actually used as a low temperature refrigerant. A cascade secondary loop with liquid recirculation uses both pumps and compressors to circulate the refrigerant. HFC refrigerant is circulated by a compressor only for cooling the CO2. The CO2 heat exchanger is, is a flooded coil that has both liquid and vapor CO2 leaving. So in summary, the impact that supermarkets have on the total equivalent warming impact has been considered to be significant. 
both of the uh, bo uh, both because of this supermarket design is focusing on becoming more energy efficient new systems have considerably lower uh, total refrigerant charge secondary loop systems are becoming more popular and in some instances natural refrigerants uh, such as co2 are replacing hfcs hydronic control systems for compressor racks and refrigerated cases provide for more accurate metering and delivery of refrigerant and are now uh, common Open cases are being replaced by closed cases to reduce air infiltration and to lower load on the storage HVAC systems because the open ones are running constantly, whereas closed systems can close uh, or can, can turn off until the uh, temperature starts to drop and then it'll turn back on, just like your refrigerator at home. But if your refrigerator was open, it would be on constantly and you would burn a lot more energy. And also as green building standards develop and new refrigerants such as hydrofluoral olefins are developed, supermarket design will continue to change. And that's true for our entire industry. Things are always changing. They're always trying to find ways to make things more uh, efficient, uh, more energy efficient, more affordable, cheaper to manufacture, cheaper uh, to buy for the customer, uh, easier to install. So things are always changing which is why it's so important to just kind of just stay involved, stay in the loop, you know, go to these uh, trade shows. That's one of the best things about the trade shows is you get to see stuff, you know, advancements in technology that's not even out yet or stuff that is out yet that you haven't heard of yet. So um, I love going to the trade shows. Uh, the next one in Pasadena, uh, the, the, the Pasadena trade show next year is definitely going to be our next uh, field trip. If we don't get to do a few more before then, uh, we'll see. I'm still trying to figure out when we're going back to school. So uh, that I will let you guys know when I know. Until then, stay safe, stay home, uh, stay healthy, and uh, and stay involved in your study. And hit that book, the um, chapter, what was this? Chapter 86. Um, the uh, review questions for chapter 86 are in Flexi Quiz already. So just read the chapter, and um, I will see you guys on the next one.